Okay, guys, I know you guys love comparisons. So what about a six inch reflecting telescope from a Bortle 4 compared to a 12 inch SCT or a 12 inch Dobson from a Bortle 8? Let's get to it. clear in this spot here. I want to see if an, the Orion Nebula looks pretty much the same from, okay, so now I know for sure it's a Bortle 4 with a 6 inch compared to a 12 inch and a Bortle 8. Never really see the Orion from my Bortle 2 zone because I just can't stay up that late. Anyway, let me take a look without this flash killing me. One more thing I wanted to add. This is only the second clear day. Every day's been cloudy except for the first day that I did the video for. So I figure since I might as well do something. Okay, it's definitely you can see more extension. Hey guys, so there's the heritage behind me and I'm just in the hammock. So I had two videos corrupt on me. So I'm gonna have to try to repeat it now, now that I see it's uh, somehow got messed up. But anyway, so with the six inch heritage in a four zone, Bordeaux four zone, I call it also green if you go by the colors, um, you could see definitely more extension on the Orion Nebula. You could also see M43, which sometimes, you know, it's, it's fairly bright. From a light pollution eight or nine, sometimes it's a bit tricky or you think you see it, but you're not sure. But M42, easily seen, and it has more structure. Uh, M43, you can see, even the Running Man, you can see there's there's a glow. Now I've tried using a couple filters, broadband, narrowband, but I couldn't actually see in long exposures, you could see the dark uh, Running Man uh, um, inside the nebula. I wasn't able to see that, but I could see there's a glow, there's a nebula. And even one above it, I believe it's 1999. Uh, it might be called a keyhole. So I could see a glow as well there. So that's the difference on that one object. So I would say on this item, or these few items, a six inch reflecting telescope, you know, whatever. It, it could be a six inch SCT. It just would be a bit more narrow than like this one that's F5 uh, or anything like that. Definitely, I could see more. So remember, light pollution is always king. Aperture does help, but in this case, I think it's slightly better a six inch F4 than a 12 inch Dobson or SCT in a Bordel 8 or a 9 zone. I was able to see the running in a little bit. Okay, it's definitely, you can see more extension. Okay, this one is called NGC 2439. It's kind of small. I've bumped it up to 15 millimeter. Nothing really interesting. I could bump it more, but uh, it doesn't look so great, but at least I can scratch it off. Just... Let's try for something in that area that's maybe a little bit nicer. Okay, let's look at cold year. 121, it's not bad, it's, it's a disperse again, kind of wide one, but it's it's okay. Oh, just took a look at the uh, beehive cluster. I mean, not just rising, but probably about 40 degrees from the ocean. Cold year 135 is okay. It's a very loose, looks like to me about 10 stars. There could be more in reality if you take uh, long exposure but uh, it's okay, nice little cluster. Most people might not enjoy it. Okay, we are gonna look at Crumpler 132, also called HR2756. Let me, let me take a look at it and I'll show you guys. Okay, it's a huge cluster. And even with my lowest power, 32 millimeter, which is like 30 something power, just fits in the field of view. 
I mean, not the greatest open cluster because it's so dispersed or so huge, but at least it's something that I can see further south than here. Let's try another cluster, Collier 140. Yeah, it's okay. In a 32 millimeter eyepiece, you see it. Not the greatest cluster again, but uh, it's okay. We'll go look at other stuff. Let's try NGC 1851. I believe it's a globular cluster. A little bit higher than Canopus, so we might be able to see it. Okay, it's tiny. In a 32 millimeter, you can just see the glow. A 15, you can definitely see there's something there. And then a 9.7, uh, you can see it, but it's not really distinct. You can't really see, you kind of see little points of stars, but it's nothing spectacular. It's a small, far away. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. So, as you can see, the sun is going to start rising in the next little while. It's not perfectly clear, except for the Orion part, which is cool. I just took some nice cell phone shots of 10 to 30 seconds. But um, yeah, not a perfect night, but uh, let me wrap it up. It wasn't that long, but that's what's great when you have something like the Astro Hopper or the uh, Star Sense. It can just guide you to several things, you know, fairly easy. And uh, there you go. So I'm gonna pack up since I'm not feeling the best, I go inside. Cheers. Okay, so my conclusion is, listen, if you guys are stuck in the city and you want to see more deep sky objects, well, definitely go bigger if you can. 8 inch, 10 inch, I recommend up to 12 inches, actually. Uh, a, a good size, portability, cost, and not too, too heavy, uh, but it's also a pretty good gain. And then after that, I think the cost, the weight, uh, and the gain becomes less. Um, so if you can, go bigger, okay? Because it's the only thing that you can do. But of course, as you guys know, light pollution is always the biggest gain that you're going to get. So if you can get darker, even if it's once in a while, three times a year, five times a year, eight times a year, whatever it is, you know, three times a year. Do it, okay? Do whatever it takes, okay? To get to darker skies, even if it's half the size, you will see more. It's not gonna be substantially more because it's like, for instance, if I could bring a 12 inch from the Bortle 8 to a Bortle 4 at 12 inch, then it's gonna be massive bigger. If I can get to a Bortle 2 at that 12 inch, then it becomes extremely massive difference. But anyway, but even cutting the scope in half from a 12 to a 6 and going four zones better might be still not a huge difference, but a bit better. So you might as well get all the opportunity that you can do. So I would say do it, even if it's half the size. Okay, guys, that's it. Like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you on the next videos. If you guys know anybody getting in the hobby, share my link. If you're on the forums, share it with them as well. And I do have members video and I Try to put uh, one video once a month only for the members that does not go public. And uh, you see something different that I create just for you guys. You don't have to join if you don't want to, but it's only 99 cents for a whole month. Uh, so you see basically four videos for 99 cents. So why not you? Why not me?